uh, is tabled by Deputy Neve Smith, who wishes to discuss investment in the emergency department at Cass General Hospital. Thank you very Deputy much, Smith. Mr Corla. Minister, I wish to raise with you today the very urgent need for investment in the, and expansion in Cavan General Hospital uh, uh, in the A&E section, as well as Monaghan Minor Injuries Unit. Cavan Emergency Department Unit has approximately 32,000 patients attending each year. It is a very busy and highly utilised service that is under huge pressure in terms of its current layout and facilities. It has 10 examination cubicles, which is clearly inadequate to deal with 32,000 patients. Admitted patients who do not get a bed on the wards are kept in the examination cubicles, thus further reducing the availability of examination beds and causing further delays in the assessment of new patients in the ED unit. The resuscitation room is inadequate. One trolley space and no room for accommodating another trolley. It is not lead-lined and the radiology department are reluctant to do portable x-rays in that room for that reason. It is very difficult for staff to manoeuvre around the room during cardiac resuscitations or dealing with trauma patients. There is only one small triage room in a hospital and ED unit that has a throughput of 32,000 patients. It needs at least four triage cubicles. We need a minor ops theatre in the emergency department and we have no designated paediatric area in the emergency department, which means, Minister, I know you'll know this, that children are currently assessed and treated alongside adults. We have inadequate facilities for women who are pregnant or gynae patients. We have no appropriate isolation facilities in the emergency department. Our reception area is small and cramped and there is no privacy as whatsoever for patients. We have only three public toilets in the ED department, insufficient for 32,000 patients annually. This is against a backdrop of staff working night and day above and beyond the call of duty to take care of their patients. Minister, the Taoiseach said, and I quote, he wishes more people would use the minor injury units, like in Monaghan, to help cut back on waiting times in A&E departments such as Cavan General. But in 2011, the HSE cut the opening hours of Monaghan Minor Injuries Unit back from what was a good service at, from 9am to 9pm, seven days a week. They have a cut back to, to 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. A truly ridiculous move when our local A&E in Cavan General is overcrowded and working with inadequate facilities. All of this against the backdrop of an appalling ambulance response times in Monaghan particularly where people are losing their lives. In recent times a young father of two suffered a cardiac arrest in Bally Bay in County Monaghan. He waited almost an hour and a half until the ambulance arrived. Doc and Cole arrived after the ambulance. Tragically that man lost his life before the ambulance made its journey to the nearest hospital. His family truly believe he could still be here today if the ambulance response had been prompt on the night in question. So, Minister, my questions to you are, the RCSI group have an application in your department for funding. Will you approve that request? Will you extend the opening hours at the Monaghan Minor Injuries Unit and broaden the facilities that are available? And will you and your Minister Harris meet with the family who lost their son on that night? because it took the ambulance so long to arrive on the scene of a dying man. First of all, I want to thank Deputy Smith for the um, topical issue. Uh, unfortunately, Minister Harris can't be here, so he's asked me just to um, convey his apologies and I'll be descriptive and then I'll come back to you on some of the issues you've raised. On behalf of Minister Harris, I'd like to thank you again for the opportunity to update the House on this matter. We are all aware that winter was particularly difficult for the health service and most recent verified figures show emergency departments demand continuing to rise through March 2018. The National ED Attendance Group has grown by 3.7% by the end of first quarter with subsequent ED admissions up by 3.3% when compared to the same period in 2017. Of course, any increased demand was further exacerbated by the severe winter associated with Storm Emma in early March. ED attendance at Cavan Hospital has increased marginally by 0.2% and there has been a 3% uh, a, a, a decrease in attendance by patients, 75 years or older as compared to the, the same, same time last year. While there were no 
there has not been an increase nationally in patients on trolley. Well, there has been, sorry, an increase nationally in patients on trolley. I'd like to assure the deputy that Minister Harris committed, is committed to breaking the cycle of overcrowding in our health service. Yeah. As part of the budget 2018. 40 million was provided to respond to winter pressures and 60%, 25 million of which was allocated this year for social care measures. This includes 3.5 million for 480 additional transitional care beds and 18 million for 1,080 additional home support packages during the winter. Minister Harris is fully aware of the need for additional capacity period during periods of peak demand. The Deputy may wish to note that over 200 additional beds have been operated for this winter. As the Deputy may be aware, Cavan and Monaghan hospitals operate on a one hospital serving the local population, with the ED being located in Cavan and facilities in Monaghan focused on elective care and, and, stre and streaming of appropriate patients in minor injury clinics. In recent years, Cavan Hospital has been a number of in investment in the service, in particular a new waiting area, additional treatment space in the emergency department in 2009, an acute medical as assessment unit, and new cystic fibrosis outpatient suite. The AMAU was officially opened in 2014 and consists of a new 10 trolley treatment area, including two single rooms in 2014. It provides urgent assessment and care for patients with medical conditions and facilitates more capacity for patients presenting directly to the AMAU and medical patients who previously have been assessed by the department, uh, uh, the, by the emergency department in Cavan. And I'll come back on some of the questions. Minister, I appreciate this is a scripted answer, but I'd have to point out very little uh, identifies the issues that I've just raised to you here today. And the one small token towards what I'm talking about, the emergency department unit, and we're given figures of 2009, which is nearly 10 years ago. I can tell you, Minister, and I know Minister Simon Harris was down there recently opening the fantastic new cystic fibrosis outpatient unit that we have. But if you were standing in, in Cavan A&E, all of the issues I have outlined to you are accurate, they're true, they're in no way exaggerated. People walk in the door, they're on top of reception, they have to give their personal details right across the counter where the entire room and patients also waiting in A&E have to, to, to listen to. Personal details about your family, your age, your date of birth, all of that stuff that you would never discuss with total strangers, le least of all in, a, in an A&E department. But apart from all that, we're talking about 32,000 patients in terms of the footfall that it's into Cavan A&E and that area and Cavan A&E itself services a huge region, not just County Cavan. As you've quite clearly outlined, Monaghan General Hospital lost their A&E department. And since the Minor Injuries Unit, which is a fantastic facility, has had its uh, hours reduced. So therefore, Cavan General Hospital, and particularly the A&E department, is crying out for investment, for expansion. And that's not my words. That's the words of the staff and the patients who attend A&E. And I would implore you, Minister, as I said, the RCSI group, it is my understanding, have an application form in. They were hoping for capital funding investment from your government. Now, my understanding is from your National Development Plan, there is no mention as whatsoever of Cavan General Hospital, which doesn't bode well for people all along the border region who are depending on their A&E department of Cavan General Hospital to service a huge area. And yes, it works hand in hand with the minor injuries department, but that's another area that has very limited opening hours. I mean, who generally has a fall or breaks their arm in nine to five hours? Those kind of things generally happen after hours and over, over weekends. So I'd ask you to respond to the specific questions that I asked. Will your department grant the application that has been made by the RCSI group? Will you extend the opening hours in the Minor Injuries Unit in Monaghan? And will you and your minister meet with the Dempsey family who had such a horrific you, experience you, based on the ambulance response times in Monaghan? Minister, to conclude, please. Thanks, uh, Chair. Well, first of all, the, to the Deputy again. Unfortunately, I can't answer some of the specific questions because I'm not actually even familiar with the, the Cavan Hospital. I do take... Um, on your concerns on board, particularly around the minor uh, clinic unit and the fact that 
uh, the time has been cut and the days have been cut as well. And I see that as a very real life issue, to be honest with you, so I will relate that back. On the, on the, the grant for application, I don't have anything in front of me stating anything about that. All I can tell you is, as in the opening statement, that further investment in Cavill Hospital will be considered when the overall acute hospital infrastructure programme. I don't have a time or anything like that for you. However, in saying that, I will ask um, Minister Harris as well, uh, would he um, consider meeting, is it the Dempsey family, is it? Yeah, I just want to make sure. And on the other issues, I have taken some notes on them and I'll refine them when I go back up to the office. Anna. Himself on the specific three well, specific questions. Well, I, I appreciate well, your not. Well, Deputy, don't. can I assure you, and I've said to Ken Corley before, any time I do a topical issue, the first thing I go is back up to the Minister's office. Yeah, and I the second thing that. I do is I send on emails, quite outlining all the questions that's been asked. And I can't be responsible whether people reply back to you, but I do my end of the as I would say, the story, to be able to make sure that people's concerns are raised, and then I expect the minister, the main minister, to be responsive to the individuals. If that doesn't happen, I would appreciate if you would come back to me, okay. because I will continue to pursue the matter on your behalf. Okay. Thank, Thank you, minister. minister. Thank you, Deputy. Now, that concludes uh, today's consideration of topical issues.